You can't always get what you want. <laughs> Rolling Stones, anyone? Huh? Man, this one is going to be fun. So, I mean, what do you want me to tell you? What do you want me to tell you about this, right? As Colts fans, have we not grown accustomed to this type of bizarre action on a year-in and year-out basis? I mean, are we really surprised by all of this? And let me try to give the timeline to the best of my ability. And of course, I'm talking about Legereus Sneed. If you haven't put the pieces together yet, I have a feeling you have just fine. So Destin Adams go ahead, goes ahead and reports that a deal between the Colts and the Chiefs is done for Legereus Sneed in terms of the compensation and that they're trying to figure out the details of the contract. But make no mistake, have no fear, the deal is done, right? Now, Stephen Holder then comes out, says he spoke to higher ups and that they said unequivocally, that there is no trade happening between the Colts and the Chiefs for Legereus Sneed. And quite frankly, by the way, if I am the Colts higher-ups, I am not telling Holder a damn thing, even if we are close. I mean, you already see where the fan base was at, right? Why get them even more riled up? Like, why even equip him with that type of information? But that's neither here nor there. So regardless of the fact, after those two things happen, we have these conflicting reports. We are in this state of confusion before today, or I guess yesterday, depending on when it is that you're watching this, because... Right, Everything other than what Stephen Holder said, other than a deal actually being done, of course, which is the most important fucking thing that there is, everything was saying that we were trading for Legereus Sneed. Which leads us to Adam Schefter on Pat McAfee's shows, on Pat McAfee's show, rather, and then he says these trade is not happening. I'm starting to misspeak just a little bit, right? To then which Stephen Holder responds to some rando on Twitter going into further detail saying, okay, here's what happened. I'm reading this word for word. The Colts were talking to Daniil Hunter and contemplating a Steed trade early last week. When neither materialized, they moved on with their original plan, re-signing their own players, over $200 million in total contracts. Meaning this entire time after re-signs that we're sitting here, or at least some of us are sitting here, hoping and praying that Legereus Sneed becomes an Indianapolis Colts, it was all smoke and mirrors. It was never even going to happen. And where do I even start with this type of thing? I don't even have any water over here. What am I going to do? Here's where we'll start. Let me start by being my usual Chris Ballard apologist self. And what I'm about to say, I mean, by the way, I don't just say things to be contrarian. Now, I know when I have an opinion that may, is, it may not be the popular opinion, I, I'm inclined to share it, but I'm not going to sit here and change my opinion or, or, or just give an opinion for the sake of, right? I'm not going to bend my opinion because of some angry people online, despite how much I appreciate you guys being here, listening, you supporting the channel, all that stuff, right? But for those of you who are choosing to be angry at Chris Ballard because of what we've learned from Adam Schefter, Here's a little food for thought for you. Why not, instead of that, what about being mad at our irresponsible Colts reporters for trying to rush out a story about a deal that was not done because they wanted to be the first one to break it? Hmm? Why not get upset about that? I mean, where is the integrity in this journalism? Like, if this was not reported, would we have all been out in the streets with pitchforks outside of Chris Ballard's house demanding that he make a trade for Legereus Sneed? No. No, we wouldn't have. Now, maybe some of us would have suggested it, but you wouldn't be in a spot where you felt like Ballard had fumbled the bag at the final hour or something like that. Am I right? Am I right or am I wrong? I'm asking. It's almost as if a degree in journalism is some sort of gatekeeping institution that is there to give people some form of credibility or competence or something like that. Listen, one thing I really hope to accomplish with this channel, amongst many other things, is to show you guys that anybody can do this. For the longest time to talk about a team and for your opinion to matter, you have had to have been like a former player, a coach, a GM, a journalist, whatever it may be, right? If you are passionate about a team, and in this case, the Indianapolis Colts, you can do this. You can become just as credible as anyone if you are willing to put in the work. Nothing can replace passion and obsession with the team 
and with the game of football, really. I have been obsessed with the game of football for 20 years, which is over three quarters of my whole life, okay? If we're being 100% honest here. You cannot fake that, okay? You cannot become a fan of a team at 17 years old with no prior knowledge of the game of football. I'm not saying that's any of you, and if that is you, I apologize to isolate you. You can't do that and then go get a degree in journalism and then replicate someone's uh, passion for a team and for the game of football for 20 plus years. Now, I'm not saying that's what Destin did, okay? I'm not saying that's who he is. I don't know. But this type of stuff that we just saw out of the Colts reporters makes me sick because all of you and myself rely on these folk to give us accurate information. I don't have inside sources. I don't know anything. I'm looking at the same stuff you guys are looking at. And they let you down. They let me down time and time again. And then it is the organization that has to deal with their irresponsibility, with their blatant lack of due diligence. And it's not the reporters that have to deal with it. And they get to keep doing the same thing over and over again. It's a blatant lack of respect and care for the position that they are in. That is just my two cents, okay? By the way, one of you guys had told me to dust off my microphone in one of the other episodes. Thank you for that. I did it. If you can't tell, I'm the type of guy, my work ethic is pretty good. Not the best, but pretty good. But it, it's very isolated, right? Like the things I work hard on, I work hard on. And the things I don't, like I could just neglect forever. This thing wouldn't have been dusted until the year 2070 if you hadn't said that. So thank you very much. Now, back to Sneed himself, right? Let's go back into the business here. There's really two questions that you have to ask yourself in the wake of everything we just saw. One, from the start, did this at all seem like something that Chris Ballard would have done? Like everything we know about Chris Ballard, everything many of you criticize Chris Ballard for, why would you even put yourself in the position to emotionally invest in this luxurious Sneed deal? Which brings me to my second question, which is, why exactly are we so hung up on this Sneed deal to begin with? I mean, what do we know so much about Legereus Sneed's game, right? With some of the opinions I see out there, I'm barely convinced some of you watch Colts games, right? You're not going to convince me that you're out here watching the Chiefs games. Why are we sitting here pretending that we are super familiar with Legereus Sneed's game, right? I, I mean, I'm not saying he's not a good player. He's a damn good player. But don't pretend you know everything about him. And let's not make it like it was some sort of no-brainer to trade a third round or whatever other pick would have been involved and then extend the guy for $20-plus million a year who has never played a single snap for your football team, has never made a Pro Bowl, is 27 years old, which is not old by any means, but at corner you never quite know that. Decline could come very quick. It's one of those positions. Listen, winning teams like the Chiefs draft guys like Legereus Sneed in the fourth round. Then there are other teams call them what you may, that hastily trade for guys like this upon pressure from their fan base, giving the team a higher pick than what they initially drafted him with, and then extending him for 20 plus million dollars a year. So I am not losing any sleep over the Colts not getting Legereus Sneed. The offseason is still young, and there are still plenty of options available, despite what you may think. Now, we will talk about some of those options. We will talk about the signing of Joe Flacco. And I will share some of my other thoughts on free agency, Chris Ballard's inactivity, and where I feel things are headed in my thoughts on all of that. But before we do, you know what it is. My name is Justin. This right here is the Ride on the Bench Colts podcast. As always, ask anyone watching on YouTube and enjoying the show. Go ahead. Shoot a like. It's going to help me get out to as many Colts fans as humanly possible. If you are enjoying the content, you keep coming back and you haven't subscribed yet, today might be the day. We're shooting for 3,000 by next season. We're not close, but we're closing in on 2,200. If you're one of the people that's still here and has not subscribed yet, maybe today is the day. But most importantly, let's talk about the Colts. Let's rejoice. Let's have a little kumbaya together. And let's get over this and move on to what's important, okay? So let's start with Joe Flacco because how can you not like that? A former Super Bowl MVP, playoff quarterback, last season in relief as a backup, pulled off the couch, may I add, defending. Comeback player of the year, beating out a dude who literally lost his life on the football field. I mean, that is good stuff. You have to have done pretty damn good if you're Joe Flacco, all right? Now, it, in my opinion, it's somewhat shocking, really, that the Browns didn't keep him. But I guess at his age, it, it is what it is, right? Because when I spoke about my favorite possible backup quarterbacks for the Indianapolis Colts this year, Joe Flacco was absolutely the name I looked at. But I didn't even like view it as a possibility to the point where I was like, well, we're not going to get Flacco. It's just not how it's going to go. So 
I mean, that's how much I like this move. I didn't even bring him up. I just didn't view it as likely. I honestly kind of thought the Browns would bring him back. It completely slipped my mind that he could possibly be out in free agency. So here are my three favorite things about this acquisition by the Indianapolis Colts. Number one, he is cheaper than Garner Minshew while being more proven. I have nothing but respect and admiration for what Garner Minshew did for this team. But for me, having Joe Flacco as our backup in the case of an Anthony Richardson injury is really a step forward for the Indianapolis Colts, which number two, Joe Flacco has seen it all, both the good and the bad. He can teach Anthony Richardson so much about this league. And AR, as we know, is an eager and willing student. And then number three, which is one that cannot be missed. Joe Flacco's ability to push the football down the field is second to none as far as backups go. He's always been revered for his arm strength, right? And some of what he was able to do last year when you look at some of the highlights is really remarkable, particularly at his age. It was shocking to see how well he was still able to get that thing down the field. And one complaint that a lot of us had about Garner Minshew and, and what, while I really feel he was a bit better at than what some of you guys gave him credit for, there's no question the inconsistencies throwing the football down the field were there. And in the case that AR gets hurt, we won't lose that element of the offense with Joe Flacco as our backup. So I don't know how anyone could possibly not like the move for Joe Flacco, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think about it. And as far as the rest of free agency goes, I will say this. When I made the video recently, and I said that the Colts were handling free agency exactly as they should. I meant that, and I was so happy, and I am so happy that we resigned all of our guys. I think that's a good thing. When you see all the guys in this league getting shuffled around, I don't think there's anything bad about keeping your, your, your core players, right? I did, though, say that under the premise that we would continue to add positions of need. Even if the names were not sexy. Excuse me, by the way, because my mouth is getting dry. And I can't just leave to go get water. I mean, I could, but I don't like to edit the stuff. What are you going to do, right? So while we are still early in the game, with each passing day in free agency, I am getting a little bit antsy and kind of waiting to see what the hell we are going to do in the secondary, right? Because even with Julian Blackman, we needed help on the back end. And without him, you can argue that the Colts have the worst group of safeties in football. Now, if I am able to see that, from my bedroom in Long Island, New York, I can only imagine that Chris Ballard as the GM of the team can also see that. But we also know how young he likes to go on the back end. He likes to invest in the offensive and defensive lines. And from there, he kind of likes to be in a state of let's draft our guys and build it from there, which I, I don't technically hate, but you also have to hit on the picks, right? That, that, that's also the case. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little worried is really my point. Now, the good news is that there are a lot of guys still available. When you look at the corner position, right? I mean, Xavier and Howard, he's not what he was, but in terms of like bringing a guy in that we can have out there. And um, I, I don't know. I mean, even if we kind of like what our guys brought, the idea of having Xavier and Howard go in there and cover the team's top uh, wide receiver while some of these younger dudes come up into their own and, and basically just let Howard fade into the background as time goes on, he can still play. I like what Howard brings to the table. Adoree Jackson, one of the guys. Dare I say Stefan Gilmore right? Steven Nelson, Texan. He's good. CJ Henderson, a young guy, albeit from Carolina's secondary. He's out there at 25 years of age. Rock you sin. Shaquille Griffin, right? The list goes on and on. There's quite a few. Fabian Moreau. I mean, some guys are out here, even a Christian Fulton from Tennessee. He was solid. I mean, these are some guys that I like at corner. And then you go to safety and, and you still got Justin Simmons and Quandre Diggs, who are my favorite options from the start. They're still available. Marcus May is a good player. Deshaun Gibson, albeit 33 years old, is still a stud from San Francisco last year. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there. I could keep playing the name game. My point is that free agency is still young. But at the same time, you know, at some point the move has to come, right? And we got to wait on it. We kind of had that thing where it's like, all right, you get the feeling that he's waiting for a domino to fall here with um, Chris Ballard, that is, with the Jerry Sneed trade, and that was totally fine. But with the group of safeties available, it would seem utterly ridiculous to walk out of free agency without any of them, without any of them, right? And while corner maybe could be a bit more understandable for me personally, uh, because I like who we have in Kenny Moore and Juju Brents and, and Jalen Jones, who, by the way, gets not enough credit from most any of you guys. I mean, he was really a more consistent player out there than Juju Brents, albeit Juju wasn't staying healthy which of course is important. The best ability is availability.
But, I mean, J- Jalen Jones was really one of the better rookie cornerbacks in all the league last year. There's a lot of things that would back me up on that. And we are still an injury away, though, from seeing Darrell Baker Jr. out there. Now, I did feel experience was an issue in the secondary. And I would like somebody to be added, uh, if for nothing else, just to be another veteran to help Kenny Moore bring these boys along back there. And I'm still waiting to see who that is. So, again, me being all gung-ho Ballard this offseason, and again, I am a Ballard guy through and through, it is under the premise that eventually we address our needs. But Stephon Gilmore, one of the great signings we've made in the past couple of years, although we did have to get rid of him for whatever that is, uh, for the reasons that I thought were justified, just really two different places, right? It was, I think I thought it was good business to let him go. Point, though, is that that came like two weeks into free agency that season. So it's not like all hope is lost. Let's be patient, but also not lose sight of the fact that we do need to add things here. And, and you have to assume that Chris Ballard has a plan. Now, whether or not we agree with that plan is next to the point, but the guy's not retarded. That, that word, I don't think, is one that we can use anymore, but I can use it. Who cares? None of you are retarded, right? I mean, if you are, I mean, whoops, sorry. So, yeah, that's kind of where I stand. That's where we are, and, and that's it, right? So, until next time, my name was Justin. This right here was the Ryan Bench Colts podcast. Like, subscribe, the whole bit, and as always, go Colts. <laughs>